Hello, my name is Dave Persons and I'm pastor here at the Wayside Presbyterian Church in Hamburg, New York. This is election season and a few days we'll all be relieved to know that it's finally over. Hopefully your candidate will win and regardless of if he wins or loses, may you still know that the peace of God is with you. It's interesting that in these last few weeks that so many of the selected scripture readings have dealt with leadership and this weekend is no different. It's a story about the leadership of people like Joshua, Apostle Paul, and then in the Gospel of Matthew, it's a story about Jesus giving one of his harshest criticism and denunciation of religious leaders in his day, calling them fake, calling them people who do not do what they say, but just lay heavy burdens on the people. Now, it's very popular to think that the most unscrupulous people about living lives of integrity and honesty are people who are politicians and true we laugh about politicians say one thing one time and then a few months later they'll say almost the exact opposite trying to keep power to keep their popularity and to please as many people as possible but we don't think that's true with clergy do we let me tell you i've been in this business a long time and it's quite true the stress the pressure on us to please people and to be something other than honestly who we are, are great at times. For example, in 1961, I, I went to a school in the South called Bob Jones University, a very fundamentalist school. I loved it in my first uh, year or two there. It was wonderful. I was away from Western New York and its harsh winters, and, and I just loved the camaraderie that I felt there. But, but then I began to question things. I questioned things so much that in my last year I was often in trouble and just weeks before I was to be graduated the Dean of Students called me in and he really grilled me about my lack of loyalty to the traditions and teachings of that school. It was a hard decision for me to make whether I should just stay or just walk out. Well I stayed and we got married that summer and we moved to a quote unquote more liberal Baptist seminary. Within two years I was told that they would not ordain me because my views were too liberal and broad because I was associating with reform people who baptized little babies. And so I just left it all. But two years later, I joined the Presbyterians, whom I was told were quite broad-minded. I actually ended up going to Pittsburgh Seminary, where I had, where I had a great time for a, a couple years until I graduated, my wife and, and our little daughter. And there we even actually had our twin daughters who were born. When I was ordained, though, I was grilled hard about my past. And finally, in trying to answer the best I could in my journey, I was asked, well, how long will you be a Presbyterian? Well, I thought at the time, maybe not very long, but here I am, almost 40 years later, still as a minister in the Presbyterian Church. Well, I've had my stress. 1989, there was an executive of our presbytery who asked to have a special investigation of me because after my trip to India, she heard that I was more Eastern than Western. I was more New Age, Buddhist, Hindu, or whatever, rather than Christian. Well, thank God I was sustained in that examination, but I promised myself then, I'll save my book publications till after I retire. Well, I'm still here, and I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the openness of Wayside Presbyterian Church. And as some of you know, I have questioned a lot of the basic traditional doctrines such as the literal virgin birth, teaching it to point to something that is spiritual, something that is more metaphysical or beyond that which seems to be literal as a story. I've interpreted the resurrection not as a physical, literal raising or resuscitation of a dead body, but as a teaching of the spiritual meaning of awakening to that Christ consciousness or that eternal part of us within. I've also taught that our salvation is not contingent upon that harsh, brutal teaching of a blood, a, a sacrifice, atoning our angry God Father, but simply the awakening to that presence within us, as I believe Jesus himself taught. So I have challenged some of those doctrines along the way, and at least here at Wayside I have been warmly accepted, Never trying to make anybody believe what I say, but at least raising the questions and trying to tell people where I feel I am in this journey. And I have not been alone. There are others now in our own presbytery. People I've heard long before myself, such as John Robertson, 
who was a bishop in England in 1963 who published a book, Honest to God, and had to leave his profession because of the fierce opposition of the, the leaders, the authorities in the church. It happened to men like Lloyd Gearling in, in New Zealand, with Jonathan McNabb just this last September in Sydney, Australia. It happened to a Reformed church in Spring Lake, Michigan a few years ago when they, they left the denomination because the denomination would not allow them to openly receive people who had a homosexual uh, sexual orientation. And that church continues to thrive and to grow even today. So I pledge to you, as long as I have strength and, are in, and am in this position, that I will seek to be honest and open, to ask the deep questions, hopefully in an atmosphere of questioning and sincere respect for one another. A few days ago, my wife and I watched an interesting movie, the story, the life story of Desmond Doss, who was raised in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia, and through a, a father who was an alcoholic, who nearly killed his father and killed his mother in a drunken rage, he made a vow that he would never shoot a gun, he would never carry a gun, he never would would try to kill anybody. Well, World War II broke out. Desmond was drafted into the army. He said he would work with the army, but he would help those in, in places where they were wounded, if they would just train him to be a medic. Well, they agreed. They gave him what they call a conscientious objector uh, classification, which he never really liked because he wanted to be on the front lines to help people. Well, his commanders, his teachers in boot camp, and at Indian Gap, Pennsylvania, harassed him brutally because they wanted him to change that belief. But he wouldn't do it. They sent him with the company to Guam, where he attended to the physical needs of injured comrades. And then they sent him on to the island of Okinawa, where 15,000 comrades of Army Marine Corps were killed. In one incident where hundreds were, were killed and laid wounded on top of an escarpment, Desmond crawled up there without any arms on himself at all, and among flying bullets that were flying around him and near him, he saved the lives of 75 men. After the war, he was issued a Congressional Medal of Honor from President Truman. One of his commanding officers who had harassed him so cruelly said at that time that Desmond Doss was a more courageous and a more brave person than he himself. What a commendation. I pray that you and I will make a determination that we will be honest, come what may, to ask the deepest lingering questions that want to come to expression through our consciousness and trust the Spirit to follow us, regardless of the pressures to conform or to just please people. But let us, especially as ministers of the Word, be a true servant in that task by following where the Spirit leads us in honest integrity. This has been Pastor Dave at the Wayside Presbyterian Church in Hamburg, New York, wishing you a, a time of peace, of blessed confidence, and open honesty. Good day.